All right, we are going to talk about balancing chemical equations. So, first, let me give you a, an easy example here. If you think of making water, you have hydrogen gas that comes together with oxygen gas to form water. Now, let me show you an example here. Here's an example of hydrogen gas. Here's an example of oxygen gas. Here's an example of water. You see how if you put these two things together, you can't get that? You have one too many reds. Well, those reds don't just magically disappear. Something has to happen to them. So what actually happens is it takes two hydrogens for every one oxygen, and they end up making two waters. And the way this works on paper is like this. On the left, you have two hydrogens. On the right, you have two hydrogens. On the left, you have two oxygens. But over here, there's only one. So to balance it, you have to put a two there. And then if you do that, you now have four hydrogens, which means you have to put a two there. This equation is now balanced. Now, if you look around on the internet or listen to your science teacher, they may have little tricks and things for doing this, and I'm not saying they won't work for you, they just didn't work for me. The best way I've found is uh, just to guess and check. So let's do some examples together here. Um, it might be hard to see in the video. Let me move this down. Okay. All right. So like I said, the best way to do this is guess and check. So one zinc on the left, one zinc on the right. One hydrogen and one chlorine, right? Oh, two hydrogens and two chlorine. So if you put a two right there, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two chlorine, two chlorine. You're good to go. All right, let's look at this one. One nitrogen, one nitrogen. You probably can't see, but that's a three right there. So three plus one hydrogen is four, four hydrogen. One chlorine, one chlorine. That one's already balanced. Don't have to do anything to it. All right, next. One aluminum, one aluminum. Okay, here <clears throat> you only have one chlorine. Here there's three. That means you need to put a three right there. Well, you have three chlorine over three hydrogen over here and two hydrogen over there. The way I think about this is what's the least common multiple of three and two? Six. That's why you never do these in pen. So I want six hydrogens, which means I put a six there and a three there. And I'll have six hydrogen and six hydrogen, but I just messed up my chlorine, which means I have to put a two there and a two there. All right, let's try one that's a little more difficult, one with uh, parentheses or something. So let's go down to this guy. So again, one copper on the left, one copper on the right. One silver on the left, one silver on the right. Now this NO3 thing is kind of tricky. There's a couple ways to think about it. The first way is you can go down and break up the nitrogens and oxygens, and, and that's fine. But you're generally going to see that these stick together. If you look at the other examples, you can also see things like PO4, stay PO4. Right, the NO3 is here, stay NO3. So you should know by now that's called nitrate. So instead of thinking one nitrogen and three oxygens, I think one nitrate. It's the same with here. Instead of thinking two nitrogens and six oxygens, I would think two nitrates. So since I have two nitrates on this side, and one nitrate on this side, I need to put a two right there. Now I done messed up my silver, so I gotta put a two right there. 
Let's see if there's one more we can do here real quick. Again, uh, here's one. One aluminum, one aluminum. <laughs> one lead, one lead. But here I have two nitrates. And here I have three nitrates. So again, least common multiple is six. So to get six on this side, I need a two. To get six on this side, I need a three. And then, of course, just fix the metals I just messed up.